any conversation about U.S. rum really needs to include discussion of Puerto Rico because as, as horribly as the United States treats Puerto Rico, um, above all with this um, just callous legal limbo that's been stuck in for decades, um, as, as awful as we are, Puerto Rico is part of the United States. And they make a hell of a lot of rum down there. Now, um, I, on this channel, have not really done, discussed, reviewed a lot of, of Puerto Rican rums. And, um, I mean, it's not for lack of, like, trying to hunt down cool stuff. Like, I've been trying to get Ron Pepon for years. It's just, like, it, it's easier to get stuff from Thailand than to get stuff from Puerto Rico right now. Um, which says something. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've... I've I have thought a lot about reviewing Puerto Rican rums, but I just like, aside from some of those like cool new artisanal distilleries, I just, like I, I try to do videos that leave people with a positive message. And maybe I should say no more than that. I mean, there's some decent things like the Barolito series. It's, it's fun, it's fine. It's bottled at 43%, which is better than 40. Uh, I don't really understand why I'm paying 30 bucks for a three-year-old rum, but, you know, it's it's there. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I'd always been keeping out for an eye out for Puerto Rican rum, which I could review. I just, I just couldn't get them. Um, and then, kind of completely by accident, I stumbled upon this, which I'm going to review today. Don Q. Don Q, perennial Bacardi competitor, uh, has made this uh, signature release, limited edition, uh, 2009 cast strength single barrel. This is bottled at 49.25% alcohol by volume. Wonders of wonders. Um, this is not available where I am in Chicago. I'd actually buy this from a European retailer. More about that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is, it's, so it's a single barrel lease. It does say bottle number 5,900. And if you're wondering how there were 5,900 bottles in this barrel, uh, that's a very good question. I don't have an answer for you, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is sort of multi-column distilled, um, you know, standard Puerto Rican rum. They just presented it well. I, th I think this is all bourbon barrel too. Um, yeah, so distilled April 2009, barrel the next month, and bottled in June 2019. Um, yeah, so I'm super duper pumped to try this. It was only like 50 bucks. It seemed like it was worth a shot for what it is. Um, but it does need some sparring partners, and it seems like it's the occasion. It seems like the occasion. We're going to taste Bacardi Silver and Gold. We're going to do it. All right, let's get these poured. And you know maybe they'll maybe they'll surprise me. I haven't had these in years, um, but uh, maybe maybe they'll step up. Let's see. All right, forty percent both of these. Um, Try to arrange these ni nicely for the camera. There we go. Okay, Bacardi Silver, um, Bar Superior, Carta Blanca, yada yada yada. Um, Yep, Cardi, huge, huge, huge producer, tons of history behind them. Um, you know them, they're all over, they get distribution all over the world, especially in the U.S. If you've ever had a rum in, rum and co cocktail in college, this was probably going into it. All right, let's see what we got on the nose. <sighs> Ethanol. I mean, so this is made in a broadly Cuban style, which means they're, um, they're just sitting on, on a big column. They're putting it in a barrel for some amount of time. I think it's, it's, a, it's only about a year or so. And then they're filtering it, filtering the color. I'm not getting any barrel influence on this at all. Yeah, it, it, it just smells like ethanol. And in fact, I, like, I've, I've had a fair number of vodkas that have more distillate character than this. It just smells like yeah, there's very little here. Like, it's just... It's just 
kind of very uh, refined, slightly rough ethanol. I can maybe the, there's a hint of vanilla in there if I go looking for it, but it's not even like oak vanilla. It's more like just that kind of almost vanilla thing you get from from ethanol. Um, kind of a boozy astringency, like the like you know cheap vodka you smell. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Like that's all I'm all I'm picking up on the nose. It just smells like ethanol. That's it, on the palate. I mean, again, it's it's it just tastes like. Again, I've had more vodkas with more character than this. That's that's basically what this tastes like. Is a deeply characterless vodka, um, cane vodka, molasses vodka, if you like. Um, ethanol, kind of a stringent, bitter ethanol. It has that little industrial twist in the back end, but but not nice. I, some, a lot of the time when I get industrial notes in rum, I enjoy it. This not so much. Yeah, it's just ethanol with a little bit like a, it's like a dirty pencil eraser on the back end. More vanilla on the palate than there was on the nose. Maybe that's wood. I don't know. I mean, dear God, this is not even that inexpensive. It's like, what, $13 or so most places? And I mean, okay, it's hard to make a good, like, in the strong sense, good product at, at 13 bucks, but man, you can make something solid. You can make something with a little bit of character. Go look at, I just reviewed like Benchmark Bourbon, right? Much cheaper than this. And it's like four years old. Um, and that, that has character. Uh, the the, the Grammy, um XO, that, that Georgian brandy for like seven bucks. That, that way better than this. Again, many vodkas are better than like, This is, it's just kind of sad, honestly. It, it, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. I mean, it isn't physically painful to drink. Um, it's just, it's meant to be drowned in sugary stuff and that's kind of it, I guess. I don't even know what to score this. I'm gonna give this 40, eight points I guess and um, yeah wow um, let's move on by benchmark um, by I, I remember like even the the cruise on light which isn't particularly good uh, and it's a couple bucks cheaper than this I remember that having more character go buy that um, okay let's move on to the Bacardi gold uh, Ron Superior, Carta Oro, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Okay, this actually smells like something. It smells like, I don't know, fake wood, I guess. But it's something. Yeah, like a little bit of, I don't even know, like, like watered down Pepsi is kind of what I'm getting. Yeah, watered down Pepsi. A little bit of that kind of dirty pencil eraser thing. And again, our old friend, ethanol. Hints of vanilla. I don't... There's not, there's not much to these. I don't know what else to say. There's not much to them. It's, it smells like... Like boozy water down pep Pepsi. That's what I'm getting. On the palate... Better than the superior, better than the silver. Um, again, just because it's it tastes like something. Uh, 
again, that something is mostly like ethanol and watered down Pepsi. And a little bit of like, uh, I don't know, like, like, like wet sawdust or something. Mm-mm. I mean, is it better? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's like, it's like asking if, if um, you know, a, a, a gaping leg wound is better than, than like uh, um, being shot in the chest. Uh, yeah, it's better. There's more going on. It's sort of vaguely tastes like something, but it's still not like, it's still, like, it's still shit. Like, just don't, I can't encourage you to buy this. Um, Score-wise, I guess I can put this in the 50s somewhere. Let's call this 56 points. 56 points. And we're going to move on. Man, I thought the tequilas the other day were rough. Um, uh, all right, we're going to get these out of the way and talk about what I want to talk about. All right. So that is that is your baseline. That is the standard. Um, let's see what fifty bucks a day European retailer gets you. On the nose, Don Q two thousand nine single barrel Puerto Rican rum. Ooh, different. I mean, immediately different universe. There's subtlety. There's there's like real flavors. Like it. it um, I am getting, well, okay, creme brulee. Let's start with that. Um, some kind of fruit thing. Maybe like some, some grape. It smells like a fruit salad, honestly. Like maybe there's a couple of grapes in there, a little bits of pineapple, a couple of berries. Banana peel. There's a cola note on this too, but it's not like... Um, uh, like cola s it's more like the little bottle shaped cola candies you know those things and there's a really nice earthiness to this it's some something I, i'm trying to figure out what it reminds me of it actually reminds me of of um certain like sherry cask malts but i don't think there's actually any sherry on this it's just kind of got that that vibe there's like a kind of like take some figs and nuts and like cover them in topsoil there's a little bit of that it's almost a little more locky thing maybe it's it's not it's not more lock it's not that that kind of meaty side but it's it's a gesture in that direction vanilla obviously uh, a little bit of ginger powder cinnamon sticks um, coffee dregs um, see, so yeah, I like, like, you know, you left your coffee cup with like a little bit of, of, um, French press grunge in there for like two hours and came back to it and smelled it. There's a little bit of industrial on this, a little bit of like an old tire hanging out there somewhere, but it's nice. It's a little bit of, I, I, I like that kind of earthy character happening here. It feels like they're adding a little bit of um, the kind of lower plate distilled to a lower strength um, aguardiente into this to kind of prop up the distillate, give it some character, because it isn't just the wood making this. A little bit of wildflower honey. Yeah. I, uh, I'm enjoying this. All right, on the palate. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yes. Yeah, I really love that grungy, almost like, um, yeah, almost like sherry, grungy space cider kind of thing. It's like, um, but it's not sherry. It's like, I, I don't think there's any sherry in this. It's like old tire, topsoil, nutshells, 
it's like a worm tub note, but but not. Bear with me. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Um, yeah, that earthiness is really stealing my heart a little bit. But then, but then, RC Cola, a little sawdust, coffee grinds, creme brulee, a lot of kind of classic column still Cuban style rummy notes. Ginger snaps, banana peel again, black pepper. This is righteous. Um, doesn't have the longest finish in the world, but um, it's got solid mouth presence. The, the mouth length is heading back into my throat a little bit. Um, the mouth feel is pretty solid. Yeah, let's give this some water. Come back to it in a second. I mean, needless to say, miles beyond the Bacardi's that I threw over there. Miles, just a, just a different. I mean, assuming this doesn't crash and burn after I add water, and I don't think it will. Um, this is the best Puerto Rican rum I have ever had, and it's not even close. Like if I. I doubt the huge Puerto Rican rum producers are watch my silly little channel, but if you do, guys, this is this is the way. I mean, you want to draw folks' attention to your category. I mean, okay, so, so I'm looking out for smaller producers like San Juan and, and so forth. Um, but I mean, something like this. Forget the stupid finishes, the the port finishes. W w forget it all that. Just take good socks that you have that have some character in the distillate. Take take those, put them in a bottle with good presentation, and sell them. Cast strength, single barrel, although I don't even know if this is really a single. I don't know what's going on with the bottle, with the number of bottles. Um, and just watch the magic happen as people discover this. Watch the write-ups happen, the new face of, of Puerto Rican rum, whatever. Whatever. Watch people discover how good this is, especially for 50 bucks. This is actually, yeah, this is this is better than I was expecting. Um, now, so, okay, so that's the good news. There is some bad news coming on this, and I will, I will let you know what that is momentarily. So, but uh, let's go back to this. Yeah. All right. Um, on the nose, now with some water added. More coffee coming through, more like coffee grinds. And like apple crisp, you know, like apple crisp pie. And still that kind of old tire note coming through. I mean, this is kind of just note perfect. This is exactly what I want from a rum of this style in this in this kind of price range. Don, Don Q, you, you kind of nailed this. Uh, on the palate. Yeah. Okay. So the earthy elements, especially the pepper, kind of come out a little bit. And more than that, the mouthfeel improves. This actually has a very, like, grippy kind of um, <laughs> imagine like over stewed tea, but it's RC cola, kind of kind of feel to it. Uh, I, that doesn't make any sense, but bear with me. This is a delight. Um, how good is this? This can, I mean, this can mix it up with upper level Cuban rums. Like it absolutely can. This, I mean, that, that, um, the Shakara 12 year old that I, I reviewed a few weeks ago and rather liked because it filled a hole in, in this market space of, um, you know, kind of oakier, 
column distilled rum. Um, I think this is better, uh, honestly. I'm not going to score it in the stratosphere because it's it, it still ultimately boil it down. It's still a pretty simple profile. It's just doing everything right. I'm going to call this 84 plus. 84 plus out of 100. Um, yeah, it's give, <laughs> it's a, a, a bright ray of hope. Okay, here's the bad news. Uh, I mentioned before that I it's not a, this is not available near me in Chicago, and I had to buy this from a European retailer. Turns out it is not available anywhere in the U.S. Um, uh, it's there is a an American version of this which looks exactly the same. It's just that they reduced the proof down to um, forty percent alcohol by volume. Let me repeat that. Um, the country where this product is made um, gets a version of it that has been reduced down to the absolute legal minimum bottling strength. And it's Europe and the rest of the world that gets the version presented at, at cast strength. Yeah. Um, and that kind of tells you all you need to know about the Puerto Rican rum producer's perception of uh, the American consumer of their products. Yeah, that's pretty sad. And honestly, I don't know. I don't know how much I can. I can blame them. I mean, when when the Bacardi lying over there is is the standard, and people just kind of accept that's that's what it's what's what it should be like. That's what it's supposed to be like. I mean. Yeah, maybe there's there's no saving us. In any case, um, eighty four plus. If you can get this, it's it's absolutely delightful. I highly recommend it. And yeah, in general, I I'm gonna start expecting more from Puerto Rican rum. And I think I mean the flip side of that is we should we 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 should be taking Puerto Rico more more seriously. I mean the rum, but also like the the territory um little fun fact that that often kind of gets missed um hawaii and alaska if you recall only joined the union in 1959 which is well within living memory um the united states actually spent most of the 20th century at 48 states or below um so yeah keep that in mind when when people uh you know, lean on the callousness of politics and and uh, Im the impossibility of making tiny marginal improvements because uh, we've done it before. Thanks for watching. I like this a lot. I wish there were more like it, especially available, you know, where I am. And um, cheers. I don't even remember what I scored the Bacardi. It, it's not good. Don't buy it.